Yes, Jay-Z might be the greatest ever. He's got multiple platinum albums, a billion plus dollars, and he's married to Beyonce. But here's the thing, he could have had multiple diamond albums, been a trillionaire, and had a harem of Beyonce's using the power of cloning. How, you ask? Well, Jay-Z has foolishly passed up on some of the most incredible beats throughout the years, making you wonder what his life could have been if he didn't make these huge mistakes. It'd probably be the exact same. But for the sake of this video, let's talk about the most famous beats Jay-Z's passed up on, the stories behind these beats, and we'll also break down how these beats were made. So let's start with the first insane beat that Jay-Z passed up on. This was made by my favorite producer, The Alchemist, and this beat might be arguably one of his best. In fact, he and Just Blaze had a beat battle before, and this beat was the finishing move to bring the place down. <laughs> The beaten question is, we gon' make it. Now Jay-Z and The Alchemist have had their fair share of bump-ins over the years. The first time they met was actually in a club. Around the time, Al had been working with Nas and Mob Deep who were actually feuding with Jay-Z, which is why Jay said this to Al. You talked about um, how one day Jay came to you in the club and told you to stop wasting your beats. <laughs> Later on, Al goes and makes the beat for We Gon' Make It, and while he's shopping it around, one person that he played it for was, in fact, Jay-Z. I also played We Gon' Make It for Jay-Z in person. That could have been a Nas record, it could have been a Jay-Z. Could have been a Nas record, could have been a Jay record. Very close, yes. But from the sounds of it, Jay-Z just wasn't all that interested, unfortunately. I played him We Gon' Make It one time, and he told, yo, Jay, come in here. And he'll, like, peek his ear in the room and hear it and go, it's pretty dope. And then, you know, I remember those moments, probably Jay but doesn't. It's hard to know why because this is just such a great beat. Here's the sample that was used to make it. Sweet, sweet music. So first we have the drums around the sample. Funny story about this, the day The Alchemist made this beat, he actually showed it to DJ Premier. But he was nervous to play it for him since the beat had a clap in it which at the time was not a sound you typically heard in gritty New York beats, making the Alchemist feel a bit less confident. But DJ Premier did end up liking it. And it's not hard to imagine why. Once you bring in that sample, this beat just comes together beautifully. Fantastic beat here, and it's too bad Jay-Z passed up on this one. The next beat's shown in a video that you've probably already seen. In fact, this video probably inspired the most amount of people to try to make beats. The footage of Timbaland playing beats for Jay-Z. The beat that you just heard eventually became Dirt Off Your Shoulders off the Black Album, but earlier on in the same video, we hear another familiar beat. This beat is probably one of my favorites from Timbaland, but as you can see, Jay-Z passed up on it. Eventually, this did get used by Ludacris, becoming The Potion. And the way this beat was made is pretty surprising when you break it down. First, we have this really simple synth. Now, I am ashamed to admit I did use 3x oscillator to make this sound. I hope God forgives me for this devilry. But you can make this sound with pretty much any plugin. It's just three sine waves with some pitch adjustments, as well as some glides. Next in this beat, we have this huge kick and snare with some bass. And most of this beat is actually just made up of percussion. This is the type of beat that can really make you rethink how many sounds you need in a full song and how simple many of the great beats are. Now there are two other sounds in this beat that are also important. We have this synth sample that plays every few bars here. And we have this vocal sample that plays all throughout the beat. which is actually taken from this sample here, just shortened. Ah! Ah! Now, as of the recording date of this video, the source of this sample is not publicly known, and I'm not gonna be the one who samples snitches, so I will be keeping this a secret. Although I could be persuaded by a harem of Beyonce's, perhaps. Anyways, great beat here. 
Next up, we have a beat with a funny story behind it because it actually caused tension between Jay-Z and the artist that did end up using it. The beat that I'm talking about is Pump It Up. Don't you know, pump it up. You've got to pump it up. Wait, wrong one. Just Blaze, the producer of this beat, explains how he played this for a lot of different artists, Jay-Z included. Beanie Siegel and Freeway passed on Pump It Up. With Joe, the Joe Budden one. Yeah. Right. Jay also passed on Pump It Up. Yeah, I and then know. went back and redid it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now what's interesting about this is that you heard him say he eventually went back and redid it. What he's talking about is how even though Jay-Z initially passed up on this beat, he did go back and make a remix of Pump It Up. And this is actually what caused a bit of animosity. Many people believe Jay-Z took shots at Joe Budden throughout his verse. Jay starts his verse saying, give me that beat, fool. It's a full-time jack move, which is pretty disrespectful. Years later, Joe sends shots back in his own song, making fun of Jay-Z for being old, basically. But since then, it seems these two have patched things things up. Joe views this remix and verse by Jay-Z as a seminal moment in his career, while Jay also mentions Slaughterhouse as an inspiration, a group that Joe Budden is a part of, or was a part of. So it seems like everything now is good between these two. Now let's take a look at how this beat was made because there are some really unique ideas that you don't actually pick up on first listen. So here is the sample used for this beat. And the way this sample is used is pretty fascinating. It seems like Just Blaze uses a few different chops from this one area of the sample and then repeats them over and over. This extends this short piece of the sample to create a full loop fundamentally. One other thing that you may have noticed that's also unusual is that this is a six bar loop. We have five bars of this horn being used and then we have that famous notable riff at the end. Another thing you'll notice to bring up the energy leading into this riff, Just Blaze introduces some more layers like a riser, these vocal samples, and some shakers. Overall, this is a really cool, unique structure to a beat that you don't really see often. By the way, if you want to pump up the quality of your beats, check out Better Beat Maker. Come see why so many members say it's a must have if you want to level up your beats. It's designed to work no matter what type of beat making software you use. Link to learn more is in the description box below. Now for the last beat, this is one of my all time favorites. I never hit skip when this song comes on to this day. Let's do this one in reverse and see if you can guess what song this is. Here is the drum loop for the beat. And then we bring in the bass. Yeah, this is a pretty stupid game. It's basically impossible to know what this is. Here's the sample though, maybe this will help. And when we bring in the sample. That is right, one of the most famous beats Jay-Z passed up on was Whoa, according to Buckwild, producer of this beat. I had this bad chick up town, she was Whoa. Had me messed up in the head, I mean Whoa. Personally, I would have loved to hear Jay on this beat the most. I have a soft spot for orchestral beats. So comment down below, let me know which of these you'd like to hear Jay-Z on the most. And if you want to know about a few more beats that Jay-Z passed up on, a link to an article about this can be found in the description box below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like and subscribe. Here's another cool video next to me if you like some more video essays on the world of beat making. But if not, I will see you next week week.